Hello everyone, this is Kashish Lewis here from Bangalore and uh, Ink Feathers Publishing is here with yet another wonderful guest, uh, an author who has recently launched her new book and we're going to talk all about it. I'll be your host for the session and uh, today we will not just be discussing um, her book and what's it about but we will also be getting into the purpose of the book. And since this is a self-help book, it's a non-fiction, and it is something that um, is almost a need in everyday life nowadays, uh, especially considering the pandemic and the tough situations that we face, there's more like a need of self-awareness, of motivation, of something to keep you going. And I'm sure the next 30 minutes is going to be fruitful, is going to be insightful, to ensure you watch right until the end as we discuss the book and the purpose of it and beyond with the author Gafito Abrahams. Hi Gafito, how are you doing today? Hi Kashish, I'm good thank you, how are you? I'm doing absolutely great and I, I, I am doing much better in fact after reading your book uh, because it is packed with so much positivity, it is packed with energy, it is packed with all these amazing emotions uh, that I can talk about. So I do not want to uh, you know, waste time. Let's get right into the book and um, talk about mainly the way that you've chosen this amazing title for your book, Beyond the Doors of Chaos, A Step Up from Rock Bottom. Tell me about it. Um, how did you st stumble upon choosing this title for your book? Is it something that you thought about or is it something that just came in your mind while you were writing the book? To be honest with you, I had help choosing the title. But before I tell you that story, I had a whole A4 paper with titles. I could not choose the exact title for this book. But what I wanted the title to be, or what I wanted the readers to see on the cover of the book, is something that tells them that, yes, we know you're having a struggle. Yes, we know there's a barrier. We know these obstacles. But there's something on the other side of that and therefore the door is there you know if, if you actually see the cover of the book i don't know if you can see a little bit there it will show you that bit of shine there in that door so for me the title is supposed to tell um, the readers out there that we have been through a tough time we know and the the ultimate word for that came to chaos. So actually one of Ink Feather's team members, we had a whole discussion for about an hour. Omar is the name that um, helped me. And we had a discussion and I kept telling her, okay, so this is what I wanted to say. And then I gave her a long title. And she's like, yeah, but let's cut off some of those. Let's, let's think about it again. And we went on and on. And eventually those strong words, for example, beyond, which means that you can, you can go further than that. And the word chaos, it's something extremely strong. It can mean anything. And for example, my struggle and your struggle might be different, right? But in your case, in your life, that is your chaos. So for me, the word chaos is supposed to tell everyone that yes, we've all been through a tough time, but let's look beyond that. Let's try something beyond that door, that that barrier, that blockage, let's try something beyond that. So that is how the title came about. A lot of thinking, a lot of scratching out, a lot of back and forth with um, Omar, but eventually we came down to Beyond the Doors of Chaos, a step up from rock bottom. And the reason for the tagline is that I think a lot of people felt like the last two years with COVID was rock bottom. Things happened that we didn't expect. And a lot of people, they lost loved ones, they experienced things that they haven't experienced before. And I think that that could feel as if they have nothing left. They are, you know, at the lowest that they could be. But I wanted the cover even to invite people to try to just step up a little from where they are. And that is the story behind the title. It is amazing how the title sums up everything, Gafito, about the book. Is your first book in a way linked to your second book? Uh, what is the whole picture behind it? So you asked me tons of questions, but I'm going to answer the last question first. 
which is is it linked to the second book yes i would i would think so yes um and i'll explain now why i mean what i mean so um, many years back i used to um be very insecure and i used to have the self doubt and um i used to try and find solutions to that problem of mine and i used to find my answers in self help books so whenever i used to go to the library as a 16 17 18 year old i used to go to the motivational side of the library and i used to spend my whole afternoon there and you know if you are a child your parents will say no for after school you can't go here you can't go there but the library is one place they'll say it's fine you can spend your entire day there so i used to love when my mother just said it's fine i'll wait for you in the car or i'll wait for you in the section where she used to read because she's a reader herself so i used to love my all um, teenage years in the library in the self help section and whenever i had a problem for example i wanted to know how to gain more confidence how do you make friends how do you put up your hand in class when you struggle that is how much of um, um insecurity i had at that age and for me as a, a a daughter maybe other women can relate or even men can relate that sometimes you don't want to ask your parents you you don't want to feel silly and say hey mom i don't know how to make cake it sounds like you know so in my head things sounded stupid but when i open the book it's as if the reader knew me before i even said anything so i knew when i picked up a book it's it's a, a source of inspiration it's a guide for me it helped for me so i always knew that one day i would like to i would like to have that kind of effect on somebody else you know as i'm going to produce and i actually started my writing journey by blogging but the funny part about the blogging was that i didn't make it public so i was the only one who could read it because i still had a bit of fear what these people going to say if they read that i felt insecure or what are they going to say if i'm worried about how i dress or you know that sort of thing so i never made it public so nobody knew that i was right and at the time i don't know if you have the same experience but we have a list of careers that we can do and it's always either teacher doctor lawyer engineer and that things like an author is not a career that's not a thing a writer is not a thing you know so for me it was okay so i know this is not going to be a career but let me just write anyway because i i find a love for it and whatever i experience for example i had that insecurity now i read a few books that got me out of that stage now i want to share what i did what tips of those people did i use to help me and that created stories and blog posts and articles about my life in that situation and later on i realized that yes i am writing about not being fearful and i'm, I'm writing about putting yourself out there but my blog my blog is still private so one day i decided okay let me take a chance and just make it available to people right and obviously the first person i told about was my mother i told her i wrote something you know i don't know i don't think it's good you know that sort of and she read it and she said but why would you think it's not good first of all it's exactly how you speak how you are as a person and that is what i portray in my writing i don't want to sound like someone that has been in the field for 10 years or 20 years i want you to experience it like i do an ordinary person that experience things that other people do but we don't share it, so no one knows this problem exists or nobody knows that there's help for that problem you know so um anyway from there you know you share it with your one friend and then that friend tells you something you share it with the other and that's how it went and later on i didn't care to put my link on facebook to put my link on instagram to tell my husband finally that i blog i didn't want him to know either at the time so um and so it, the blog came out there right and then one day i thought to myself but what about the book why didn't i just put everything that i had all the things that i've learned over the years why didn't i just put it in a book and i actually physically wrote it in a notebook i wrote it i was really old school i wrote it although there was you know computers at the time nobody had a laptop with computers you go to the library for your computer sort of thing i wrote it 
and I had that papers. I even got that was full time. Eh? We, I wrote it as the years went on. You know, certain things that stood out for me in my life. And then later on, I thought to myself, you know, I'm going to carry this with me until one day. You know that one day everyone has one day I'm going to do this. One day I'm going to do that. And anyway, I went on and on with the blogging and all of those things that I had that that notebook. And then obviously lockdown happened and most people, they started baking and cooking. And I thought to myself, I am actually going to type up this book. After so many years, I will type up this book. And you know, if you speak to people and say, you know, I'm going to publish a book, but how can you publish a book? The whole world shut down. How are you going to do this? And I thought to myself, well, now I'm going to put to the test what I talk about in this book. Having that challenges, having that barriers, but still pushing beyond it. And Kashish, I published my book in lockdown. I had people buying it from all over the world because I didn't let that thought stop me. And that is why I'm saying that book one is linked to book two. Because not directly, but you will see the the similarities or the things I speak about. And it will always be things like start with your struggle, evaluate, and then move forward. Because once you tell yourself, I'm not going to let this stop. I'm not going to let that challenge dictate my future. You will see your entire life changes. I mean, after I had so many people telling me, but it will never work out. The world shut down and I decided, but everybody's online so let me just try it and when i just tried it today kashish i have book two out and if i listened to other people and if i listened and allowed that challenge to put me down there would have been no book one or book two so that's a long answer to your question <laughs> but I, I think it was spot on because you elaborated so beautifully on how uh, the importance of a writer is or his story or her story is so beautifully shown through the experiences that they go through in everyday life be it the pandemic that uh, was you know every everybody around you were uh, sort of having a tough time you probably had a tough time in the pandemic and everything was shutting down and like you said you still managed to get book one and book two out which is amazing kudos to you for that so you know, in the start of your book, you very clearly mentioned why this book. You you start off by saying everybody in the pandemic has had a tough time and we deserve, uh, that is one line that hit me hard, we deserve to start a life that where we appreciate ourselves, where we are loving, where we are loving and we appreciate ourselves. And that is, that is simply a beautiful line. I have it highlighted. And uh, I've written it down because that is, I think we, it reminds me that I, I deserve that. I deserve to enjoy my life. I deserve to feel deserving and I, feel, I, I deserve to be appreciated. So thank you for that one line. But let's talk about a little more on the pandemic, um, since you talk about it in the first part of your book and how everybody struggles around it. Obviously, a, 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 a lot of things that were happening around you must have inspired you in a way or have contributed to your work. So how did not just the pandemic, but how do you think that maybe your family or so, you know, you are married, you have a daughter. Uh, do you think that in a way or the other? Oh, you have two daughters. That's that's lovely. So do you think in a way that must have affected your writing positively or negatively uh, you know what what is your uh, story with having the family along with you while writing the book there, there must be parts of it that must be inspired by them or maybe they helped you through so tell tell me a little more about that about the influence around you so um before uh, lockdown happened the month before I actually left my job that I had for five years. And when I first mentioned that to people as well, and if you have a secure job position, you tell people I'm going to leave and try something new, the world stops. But how can you do that? You are making a mistake. 
right? But in my heart, in my passions, I knew I was making the right decision, even though there was people that did not support, right? So what I did was my usual support system would be my husband, my, my mother, my father, my daughters play the part of support, but they don't know it. Because if you read my book, you'll hear that I speak about my children as well, because they help shape who I am today. Because as a mother, you make certain decisions and there, uh, there's nothing wrong. And I always mention this as well. There's nothing wrong with having a family, with getting married, with you know, doing things that people in the community expect, right? But the the difference comes in uh, when you make the decision. You have the the option of making that decision. So I made the decision to get married, right? So for me, when I started all these things that I do, when I started with the blogging, when I started with my photography, when I started teaching, I knew around me i need to build a support system because first of all as a working woman you're already out of the norm because we're supposed to be at home looking after the children you know that is what we hear all the time but i built that support system around me where i asked for help because as a an individual you always hear you can do it all and i sometimes say the same but when i say do it all it means ask for the help if you need it look for the help if you need it and that's why i say with a self-help book as well is that if you have a struggle i promise you there is an answer you might not be looking in the right place and therefore i write these type of books you know and also i try to create an environment at home where i support my husband in his career so i get that same in return and my children is observing that relationship they're observing what I am doing as a mother. So a lot of uh, a lot of women would say, um, I'm, I'm putting my career on hold because my children will hit me for leaving them. You're not leaving them. You are make them part of the journey. For example, this poster here, I put it up, the book I had it done and everything, and my both my children, they wanted to touch it. You know how children are, they want to touch it. They want to see what is right. it. <laughs> look at it the whole time because they're wondering because it, it hasn't been there before and I sat down and told them what it's about and I had them take pictures with it so now automatically you're creating that envir environment they are part of it the same with my husband so that is how I try to create that environment right so even when I left school I was teaching that's the job I was telling you about five years I was teaching so that is all I knew I knew the same route I'm driving every day I parked in the same parking I went to the same class I saw the same kids for a year and then the next year another year with the same kids you know so I had a normal everyday routine that seemed like it is exactly the same and for me I that is when I decided that if I'm not going to make a change then my life will be exactly like that every single day. And I made that decision to leave, right? So what happened was I left my um, permanent job for some contract that had no guarantee, right? So that is that uncertainty, that uncertainty that makes you fearful, that makes you doubt because now you know, saying I'm leaving and actually leaving is a different story. So I, when I did that, it was the same time, Kashish, that lockdown happened. And I just started my new job. So you can imagine the chaos in my life at the time, you know? Because first of all, I had a routine every day. I leave the same time. I come back the same time. And now I started a new job. I'm traveling a new route. I'm starting a new schedule. The kids don't understand mom is dressed differently now because she's in a different job. You know, that's what I think. So I had to adjust and the lockdown happened. And then I had to adjust again because now I'm working from home. So all those things I do speak about in the book where I tell you that, yes, there's going to be times where you can't plan. Or you plan and the plan don't work out. Like, for example, I plan, I'm going to leave school, I'm starting my new job. But I didn't plan for lockdown to happen. But when that happens, adjust. 
adjust your plan so that you don't sit in the same place and basically feel sorry for yourself or you give up now all of a sudden because things didn't go out exactly like how you put it down on paper. So that is part of the the process in the book because the book is basically a process if you if you read from where I start until where I end. So that is the whole story. I do speak about my my journey basically. In both my books I speak about my journey. So therefore I say that lockdown 100% it, it guided the book and also like you asked me about the the people around me how do they help with that situation i do speak about them in the book so yeah i hope okay. i'm answering what you're asking me oh <laughs> uh, the people the the part where you mentioned about uncertainty i agree with you 100% life is all about uncertainties and how we deal with them as uh, they're thrown along the way and the pandemic of course it was one of the biggest uncertainties for the whole of the world and uh, it's it's wonderful how you spin it around and turn it into your favor for a while and you know again even even in spite of all that you were still facing new challenges and uh, new things every day so we talked about your family and how they were a support system and that's a beautiful thing uh, that you've had you have a, a a beautiful family that supports your work and that you are like an inspiration uh to your daughters as well so tell me a little more about south africa where you come from and uh, you you live in cape town so tell me a little more about how maybe south africa is also a part of your book is it the culture or the society or uh do you know all in all the people uh, in and around you in your everyday society or at your workplace or uh, your friends or your colleagues or your school from before Uh, do you think that there is a part of you that has carried that and leaves a little of South Africa in your book? Um, I don't specifically mean, mention South, uh, South Africa, but I do mention community. And um, my answer to that direct question would be that I speak about the community because I know that many of us and and I'm talking the book is about my own experience so obviously I'm talking about the community around me and South Africa like you said is that we grow up and I think many of us we grow up and we know that okay this is what we need to do mom and dad has done it teachers telling me to do it um, lecturers telling me to do it or whatever you do I work at the place this is what they doing so we all know the norm we don't think there's anything else because we see it everywhere so i was one of the people that saw all of the above but thought as if but i think there's something else i just have that feeling there might be something else because i was in a class once and you know you get that assignments where they say choose your career and i i couldn't put down one career kashish i could not because i knew that there must be something exciting out there is the only one thing that i can do and now when when people around me as well we all grew up the same or similar right because we live together we see each other we're in the same schools we go work in the same place or same area that sort of thing so i think that many people cape town south africa strand specifically where i stay is that we all grew up like that right but my my book tells you that even though yes we grew up like that that is how our parents lived that's how our great grandparents lived but we must know that the world has changed so the opportunities out there is enormous so for me it's as if the world is changing but our mindsets are the same as people of 100,000 years ago that's actually a line in my book <laughs> is that i want people to know and it's fine if you make that decision and i had this discussion with my husband once he took a drive some of fun remember but it came out to where i told him i don't mind i don't have anything against somebody that tells me you know i've done this job for 30 years of my life but i always do it for 30 years but are you happy for 30 years in that job for me it's if you go home every day and you complain to your um a better half or your other half your partner you telling them every day oh i hate my job i hate going here or i don't like my office i don't 
that sort of thing, then you're not happy where you are, although you're there for 30 years. Compared to somebody that has been in a job two years, and another two years, and another two years, but you are loving your life, you are happy, you can provide for your family, you're loving your dreams out, and they can be part of that then why not choose the part that makes you happy? So for me, it's, it's yes, we know the norms, what we're supposed to do, but is that really going to make you happy? So for me, the I speak to a lot of women, specifically Kashish, that will say, um, I wanted to do this, but my mom said that I must get married, or my mom said that it's better that you are at home. The husband's again the same. I know my wife would like to do this, but I thought she'd rather stay at home and watch the kids. There's nothing wrong with it. If you are at home, you are watching the kids, you chose that, it's fine. But then you cannot go out there and complain about it because you took the decision. So for me, when I write about things like this, I always say that you have the choice. You have the choice that you can think and do exactly what people did a hundred thousand years ago but remember that you're going to live that same life or alternatively you can respectfully understand what they've done and choose to you know implement things that is needed you know in culture in religion in any of those things we have a set of rules and that's okay we can follow those set of rules but also make yourself a priority. Add things into your life that gives you joy, that makes you excited to wake up. And if I walk around and I speak to people, I don't I don't preach positivity and say, oh, you need to, no, I'll always say, so what do you do or what do you do for fun? And people don't have an answer because you don't know who you are. You had to do what somebody tells you to do. If somebody asks me the question, I will give you a less kashish. I will speak to you for an hour telling you what I love because I made it my a part of my life to learn who I am, to learn my passions. And I think that if people implement that part in their life, we will have a lot more people smiling and a lot more people loving part of their passions. I'm not saying leave your job to go do random things or whatever, but I mean add something into your life that makes you happy. I think that is part of the final chapter in my book where I say that you need to do that. And that goes for moms at home as well. We just so used to just caring for everybody else that we don't even take five minutes to put the facial on or to take a minute to make yourself a cup of tea and enjoy it peacefully. We don't do that. So this book is for plain and simple people people in my community, people in Cape Town, people in South Africa, people around the world that is living simple lives that feel as if they need something more. So just add that little bit. And that is what this book is about. It's not giving you a big blueprint of this is what needs to be done. It tells you these are the little steps that you can take to live a fantastic life, even if you experience rock bottom. I love how you talk about uh, the option of choice. We, each one of us as an individual, we have these choices ahead of us. At every point of time, at every point of uh, life, as we go on from, be it from teenagers to being uh, a young woman, and then to moving into a family or whatever the, whatever part of your life, you always have a choice uh, that you can try different things or you can follow in somebody's footsteps a person that you look up to and follow the norm that's absolutely all right and that perspective is uh, uh, i would say a hundred million dollars because each one of us need to learn to respect each other's decision and opinion and what they choose to do in life being a homemaker or staying at home uh, staying at home mother or staying at home father is not a demeaning thing or is not something that you should be looking down upon so at the end of the day what matters is the choice and i love how you explain that beautifully throughout your book let's talk about uh, a little more specific to your book you talk about excuses how every one of us have 
a line of excuses for ourselves and i can personally relate to that because be it be it as a kid you know you always have an excuse i don't want to go to school today because i'm not finished my homework and that moves on when you are a teenager i don't want to take up this responsibility because it makes me feel insecure moving to uh, getting into a relationship or being a part of a family i am scared or i'm insecure i don't have enough money and what, the line of excuses that come up that keep us or hold us back from experiencing something new or trying something new or challenging ourselves every day what do you have to say about it i love there's a little part where you've left a line in the end it says you know write down your excuses and that is when it hit me you know 100000 excuses in my head why i didn't publish this book or why i did not step up that day and talk why i did not just go ahead and have a conversation with that person because that person looked lovely these excuses just started coming in you know right into my head so what do you have to say about it how do you how did you come up with that concept and do you personally think these excuses were holding you back for all these years yes i'll answer the last question again first i think yes it did it held me back from a lot of things and i think that um as human beings it's normal i think it's normal you don't want to get up for work why i'm tired i don't want to go drive why this traffic i don't want to try this thing why i'm going to fail i don't want to buy or i don't want to do that new course why i don't have money but if we really sit and that's the reason i asked you to write down your excuses if re- we really sit and look at those excuses we'll see that there's a there's the solution for it. for example the first excuse i use i'm tired i don't want to go to work you are tired because you went to sleep late last night because you were watching a movie so if you had to change that and you woke up fresh the morning do you have an excuse you don't or you choose to drive at the time with the is traffic and if you woke up slightly earlier you might have less traffic on the road but did you try it no because you assume that it will be like that the same goes for any other thing the money the same i don't have money to do the new course but i have money to buy new clothes you understand what i'm where that comes from and i have, i'm i'm proof of that that's why i mentioned it in my book because i used to make those type of excuses <laughs> i can't do this because of that i can you you know what i mean that that sort of thing it, it's normal for all of us and therefore this book says evaluate so write it down and look at it is this something that you can change that's There's an activity that's i think that's an activity that uh, uh, is is my favorite out of the book because as i went uh, you know up ahead to every part there's like part 1 part 2 part 3 part 4 at each step is like a step ahead for me emotionally mentally uh, you can say psychologically and uh, speaking metaphorically when we say that with every part of your book Uh, I guess the reader moves ahead with every activity that you give. I also noticed another thing where the next, the right, uh, uh, right after this part, you have a part of gratitude that talks about gratitude. And uh, speaking of gratitude, which I personally feel like is a big part of my life, not everybody is open to the idea of gratitude in everyday life just because they do not understand the, the strength and the power. of uh, feeling grateful every day be it for those little things like you said talking about the excuses right to fixing them to understanding these excuses analyzing them and finding out the solution and then moving to the part of gratitude where every single action every single part of your life you start feeling grateful so let's can could you elaborate a little more on uh, the part where you talk about gratitude how did you come up with this concept as well uh, about gratitude and do you think that it is uh, the 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 most important part of your book i think um it is a very important part the reason for that is we we tend to think that we are great 
if I just, you know, giving the random thank you or, you know, the acts of prayer that we do. However, genuine gratitude, that is when you are experiencing difficult and you are still finding something in it to be grateful for. Because if I say, Kashish, here's a brand new car for you, you're going to be, oh, thank you, thank you. You know, it's something good, right? But if, if something bad has to happen, are you going to say thank you with that same enthusiasm? You won't, right? And that is where we, we will get that distinction in our lives is because at that point when something happens that is not as amazing, your whole entire life will feel as if it's worthless. You don't want to do this. Your mood changes. The way you take things on in your life changes because you have a, a difficult, right? And and that happened now in, in COVID with a lot of people. And I understand, I understand that you can feel as if there is nothing to be grateful for. Because it's difficult to tell somebody when they are in experiencing something hard that, oh, you need to be grateful. When they are experiencing something that feels genuine to them, right? Because like I said um, previously um, in the interviews that my chaos and your chaos is not going to be the same. So my act of gratitude and yours is also not going to be the same. And it can be anything. So showing um, somebody, for example, simple things. And I always speak about simple things in, in my books is because these are things that we can implement in our daily lives. So for example, every morning you wake up you make a cup of tea for mom, for dad, or if you have a husband or wife, you make a cup of tea. And some of us will grab the tea, drink it, and go to work. But have you ever stopped and think that there might be somebody out there that can never drink tea in the morning, or they have to choose when to drink it because they don't have that luxury. A cup of tea, Kashish, a cup of tea. So, personally, as a woman of... Oh. Uh, choice as a woman of power as a woman of having struggled and getting through what is your purpose of writing this book and um, to sum it up let, let's talk about those last two lines allow yourself to grow and just breathe to sum it up is that the purpose of the book I would say yes. Um, the part where I say just breathe is that yes, we think that our lives is over. We think that there's nothing more. We think that COVID happened. Nothing can be better after. We think so. The breathing part is just to remind you that just give yourself a moment to actually look at everything from a different perspective. And the thing is that we don't, sometimes we don't, even in a stressful time. I learned this thing, Kashish, and I think that's why I ended my book this way. I am a person, or I used to be, anxious. I used to work myself up if I'm nervous. I am, you know, that sort of thing, right? And one thing I used to miss in all of it, even in excitement, in, in anything, that I experience emotions, right? The one key thing that I used to forget to do. So if I'm stressed, breathe. If I'm anxious, breathe. If you are worried, give it a moment and breathe. Because if you allow yourself to just come back to that specific moment, and you'll see that things are not always as bad as we think they are. And that if we're going to allow all those struggles, all those chaos, to take over who we are as a person, to take over our lives, to take over our families, to take over our decisions, we are never going to grow. So you can sit down, be in the moment, breathe all your life, but if you're not gonna allow yourself to grow, you're gonna sit in that same position until the day you close your eyes. And then you've done nothing, absolutely nothing. And if you speak to anybody, I like to speak to people to hear the perspectives of life because I think that is what makes us different, is the, the way we think. And if you speak to older people, older generation people, 
and you ask them for advice, what would they give you? If don't give up on it. They'll say that number one. And the thing is, it's not good to have regret. So the thing is, you are going to spend your life getting caught up in the chaos where you could have sat down, breathe, and allow yourself, allow yourself to dream, allow yourself to get through this, allow yourself to grow, allow yourself to experience the beauty of life. Because just as there are bad sides, there are good sides to life as and that is why I, I speak from the heart. I speak from my experience. I speak from what I see. And therefore, I leave those spaces for the option for the readers to write down your experience, to write down your dreams. Because the book is not about you. The book is telling about my experience. But it's inviting you as a reader in to write down what you experience and what you are going to do next. And what is your step? What are you looking forward to? So that is basically the ending chapter of the book. I love and the action. Yes, I love the action plan that you've added in the end. I'm definitely going to use those. And I think I will create copies of it. Uh, because I, I personally feel like I need an action plan every alternate day or every alternate week. And uh, it's, it's a wonderful thing how you're able to sum up everything in the book and leave a little bit more. Uh, for the readers to ponder upon by the end and not giving them all the answers because I feel like your book is not something that personally when I read it I felt like it was not something that was telling me what to do but it was making me ponder upon the fact that what am I supposed to do for myself what are the things that I should be doing what are the things that maybe I should try I would say it's a book of answers I, I, I would say it's a book of questions that allow you to progress allow you to build on yourself for me it felt like a journey for me every step every part of the book felt like a journey and i cannot wait for more and more readers to pick up this book uh, and explore themselves uh, through it because each and every chapter in the book made me feel like i was progressing like i was making progress in my personal life so thank you so much for spending these 30, 40 minutes with us talking about your book because uh, when we hear it from the author, where we hear beyond what we just look at on the cover or behind, I guess it motivates us even more to listen to the book and to, to read the book or to explore it beyond. And since your title itself talks about Beyond the Dose of Chaos, I really hope that it does take the reader beyond what they're looking for in, in this book. Uh, you can find the book on Amazon, you can find the book on Kindle. It's an ebook and uh, it's available globally. So, wherever you are, whatever country you're from, whatever part of the world, you can access this beautiful masterpiece uh, written by uh, Gafito Abrahams, who's right here talking to us today. So, uh, Gafito, I, I had a wonderful. Uh, you know 30 40 minutes today with you it made me feel like everything that i read in your book is a personal journey for me it's not just another self-help book in the shelf that is lying around that i can say that this is positivity but this is a journey this is something that will take you to progress thank you so much for your time you can check the book out again like i said on kindle on the ink feathers bookstore or on amazon it's a must, must read if you are looking to progress, if you are looking to go beyond that door of chaos in your life, if you are ready to step up and move on and give yourself the life that you deserve, as Gafito says in her first chapter, that you deserve to give yourself a loving life, a life that where you appreciate yourself. Ending on this note, we'll see you again in another interview with another book, with another amazing author. So stay tuned and keep watching uh, Inkfeathers Publishing on YouTube and on Instagram. Thank you so much, Gafito. Thank you so much to you and Inkfeathers for this beautiful journey. And I hope that all the readers, they will find something that will inspire them and that they will get beyond that doors of their career.